Welcome to Whiskey's a Journey. My name is Peter Fasciano. Today's journey, we're heading away from Glen Murray, and we're going to head over to Glen Farkas. Glen Farkas? Glen Farkless. Before the review gets going, I'm going to go ahead and open up and pour this glass because this is a 25-year-old, and as Ralphie says, a minute in the glass for every year in the cask. Welcome to Whiskey's a Journey. My name is Peter Fasciano, and today we are actually heading into the last video of my age-stated single malt scotch whiskey reviews. And we're gonna head away from Glen Murray, and we're gonna head over to Glen Farkless and take a look at the Glen Farkless 25-year-old. The 25-year-old's coming in at 43% ABV. I already have it in the glass from the introduction. Just kinda wanna get this to air out a little bit, give it a fair shot because it's 25 years old. This is natural colored, says it on the back of the label, and not chill filtered, but I don't know if it is or isn't. If you guys know, let me know in the comments down below. The thing that I've seen, it says that it's non-chill filtered. This is a 750 milliliter bottle, and I'm in Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona, and the time that I bought this bottle, it was $199.99. Getting into the nose on this, it's sweet, it's sherry sweet. A little bit of leather notes here, a little bit of tobacco and coffee, some wood, and way in the back, I'm getting this strange vegetal floral note. It's very faint, but it's there. And the sherry fruit that I'm getting on the nose is not, is not a fresh fruit. These seem to be, or this seems to be a little bit of the darker fruits that are a little bit dried, not the fresh dates and the fresh figs, maybe dried. All right, let's go ahead and get to the palate on this. All right, well, that first sip kind of hit a little bit flat. I have a little bit of build on the ABV. I'm getting very subdued sherry notes. The leather and the tobacco and the little bit of chocolate is there. Let's go for that second sip. I do want to say that this feels sticky. It's coating everything. It doesn't just hit my tongue and disappear. It coats my tongue, coats my cheeks, coats the roof of my mouth. It kind of lingers there. There definitely is a thickness to the whiskey, a little bit vis a little viscous. Swirling around in the glass, it seems to build up around the edges. Then the legs come down a little bit later. I do get a nice well-roundedness to this. I have some barrel tannin on the side of my tongue, which is always really good. I get the dark fruits in here as well. The figs, the dates, the plums. It's not a burst of flavor in any way. I would not say that this is a crisp whiskey by any stretch of the imagination. It is well-rounded. Everything builds and then lingers. It just sits around. Maybe that's the viscosity. It's sticking to everything inside my mouth. And maybe that's causing the finish to last a little bit longer. The chocolate, the leather, and the tobacco are there and the dried fruits, the dried dark fruits. All right, let's go ahead and add some water to this, talk a little bit about the distillery, and then we'll wrap it up by giving it a score. I'm only doing a drop or two, so I don't think it needs anything more. While the water is doing its thing, let's talk about the distillery. It seems to be that this is one of the older distilleries in Speyside, established in 1836. The word Glen Farkless means Valley of the Green Grass, and this is one of the few distilleries that still uses the direct fire stills. I believe around 1981, they did for a short period of time use steam, but then they quickly switched back to the direct fire because they said that it took the heart out of or the guts out of the taste of the distillate so they went back to the direct fire i believe all their expressions are sherry cask finished and i believe because of that consistency using those x sherry casks they can tell when something is not right and that's why they went from the steamed stills back to the direct fire the origination of the distillery i believe let me get the name right robert haley was the first owner of this he died in 1865 and then john grant bought the distillery and then it's been in the Grant family ever since. I believe they're in the fifth or the sixth generation of Grants. And the distillery has grown over the years. They started out with two stills. Then in 1960, they upped it to four. And then in 1976, I believe that was their last upgrade. And they went up to six stills. Their core range of ages, they have a 10, a 12, a 15, a 17, 25, 30, and 40. 40. They have a family cask range. They also have the Glen Farkless 105. All right, let's go ahead and see what the water has done to this and then give it a score. And we'll call this series completed. The water brought out a little bit more of the sherry. The chocolate, tobacco, and leather are still there. That vegetal or floral note is still there. It's kind of a funky vegetable floral, almost a little bit reminiscent of the St. George 
the American single malt, St. George. I've got, I got that note on a couple of scotches also, and that's a very distinctive nose. Once, you, once you've got that, it's, it's in your brain. You can pick that out anywhere, and I'm getting it in here, which is weird. I've never had that before in here, and I've had this quite a bit. I'm about down to here on the, on the bottle. All right, let's get that sip in here with the water. All the sherry notes are there. It seems to have a little bit more of a punch on that ABV, which is weird when you water it down, it brings it out a little bit more. Or the whiskey in the glass is now a little bit hotter. Not ABV hot, but whiskey hot. And that's very difficult to describe. But I think if you've, if you've ever had hot whiskey, even though the ABV is a little bit low, you kind of get that sensation as well, just like the note of that vegetal. It's very distinctive. And that water kind of brought the, the heat of the whiskey out. It is well-rounded. There isn't much of a finish. There's less of a finish now with the water than it was prior to that. I don't think I would add water to this at all. I think I would just do it just the way that it is. Pour it, get it in your glass, let it breathe a little bit and be satisfied with that. Whoa, a little bit of uh, bitterness there again at the very end. Every once in a while you breathe in, I kind of got that note. Interesting. Let's go ahead and finish this up and give it a score. My rating system is out of five stars. Even though this is a 25-year-old whiskey, I would not go any higher than 3.5. Three and a half stars. That's what I'm going to give this. A little bit disappointed, but for the price, and if you're looking for a good age-stated whiskey, single malt scotch, you can't go wrong with this one. It's just not fantastic. It is well-rounded. It's an easy sipper. $199. Age to impress people, but it's a little bit underwhelming. So there you guys have it. That's where I'm going to leave it. My next series of videos is going to be on Japanese single malts. So if that sounds interesting to you guys and you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe. Share this video with somebody in the whiskey world that might get some interest out of it. Turn on that bell notification. Leave some comments down below on any of my series. I'm releasing videos every Monday and Wednesday and the first Friday of every month. So if that does sound interesting to you guys, turn that bell notification on. And with all that being said, enjoy your journey, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.